Welcome back to my studio. I'm working on this painting of Arizona, Sedona, to be specific, and um, I'm at the end of it now. So I just wanted to tell you if you would like to see the entire step-by-step -step process as I painted this painting from the, you know, the sketching it up on the canvas all the way through painting the wall, the red rocks of Sedona, just visit my blog. The link is in the description below and you can just follow that step by step through and just see the whole process. And you can also subscribe to my blog and then you'll get an email every time that I make a new post. And I blog pretty regularly. So join us and come follow along. And right now I am working on what is called poker plant. You see this a lot out in the desert southwest in California. And it's just, it's a, it's a beautiful plant. Um, a little too wet here to, to grow it and where I am in Texas, but it uh, I just love it. When we lived out in Arizona, it, it was just everywhere and I, it was so fun to see it. But since on this, normally I paint my flowers first and leaves last because usually the flowers clump within the leaves and so I want to keep my colors crisp and clean and with the flowers in the, in the foliage. But since the flowers on this plant are up above, I'm going to go ahead and get my foliage blocked in first. And get the long leaves at the bottom done. These are mixtures of phthalo blue plus cadmium uh, yellow. Wait a minute. Start over here. My tongue, my mouth brain coordination is not working real well right now. But this is, these are combinations of phthalo blue and lemon yellow. And I'm using a bright brush. This is called a bright brush. It has a square end. I like it because I can cover big areas with the flat side, or I can use the narrow side to make smaller brush strokes. And these, the foliage at the bottom is almost like a daylily or similar in lots of the lilies and have have foliage like this and so it's goes pretty quick and the sun is coming from the left so I'm going to add some highlights in there and then this is a mixture of phthalo blue plus liquid that just gives me a nice cool dark in the depth of the, the shadows and depth of that foliage. Now my gate is phthalo blue plus white. That nice crisp blue. And I use some of that remaining from the gate to work into the foliage. This just gives again additional coolness in there. And I've even saved a little bit of my wall color, that adobe color, which this is a mixture of my mud, which is two parts ultramarine blue and one part alizarin crimson. And cadmium orange is added into that, just a tiny little touch of phthalo blue and then white. So I can go back in and do some of those, paint in some of those negative spaces in between the, those long strap-like leaves. And they just come down over the floor. And I also, this painting is painted on a gallery wrap canvas, so actually I go around the edges of the canvas. So what I'm going to do, this shows you how I start getting that foliage blocked in. Put some highlights in here. I'm going to finish that out and then I'll come back and show you how I add the poker plant blossoms. So I will this will to be continued. Okay, the polka plant flowers balance on long stalks above that strap-like foliage. So I'm using some 
Cadmium Red Deep plus Magenta for the darkest red. Then I'm also then there's Cadmium Red Deep by itself. Then I will have a mixture of Cadmium Red Light plus Cadmium Deep. And then Cadmium Red Light and then some orange. These flowers have a really nice combination of these reds and oranges. They're just really, really bright. Here's a picture of some of these that I'm using for reference. And uh, so that kind of gives you an idea of how the flowers just are on those stalks above the, above the foliage. And I use pretty thick paint. And again, this is a bright brush that has a square end, but I can use the corner of the brush to make those finer brush strokes. And I just start putting my flowers in. Start with the dark first, and then I start coming in with the, the brighter colors. I'll have one break over the doorway, or the gate, and that, that helps give the feeling of depth in a painting. When you have overlapping objects, that just gives you that feeling of depth. Because that means, you know, this has got to come forward of that gate. Some of the flowers are kind of in front of each other. You don't want them all just singly spaced, kind of like a picket fence. I'll just show you how I do a few of these, because take me a while to do everything, but let me get a few up here. And then there will be one or two down lower. Now these do come over the foliage, so I have to be very careful and just, just lay my paint on top of that green because I don't know if you can see this, but my brush has picked up some of that green, which mutes the, the reds and the oranges, so I don't want want to do that, so I have to keep cleaning my brush. And then the lower part of the flower is turn, comes into the reds and the oranges. It, it goes from a deep red at the top to a oranges and yellows at the bottom. So this is my cadmium red light that I'm putting in here now. This will be my cadmium red deep is at the top. Just a nice gradual gradation down. Put some of my orange in here. And I'm even going to bring some cadmium yellow medium onto this. Mix that in with my orange. Don't want it to be too yellow. Just give a little highlight in there. This is how we do these flowers. And again, they're just really a beautiful deserty, deserty flower. of them are, again, this nice orange, cadmium red light orange. And I'll pick up a couple of colors on my brush. I don't know if you can see that. Um, and so I get a little variation. Well, that didn't show very well. Here I've got a couple of colors on the brush. And that just gives me a variation within my brush strokes. I just want to have lots of texture in this so that when the painting's dry, you can actually run your hand over it and feel it. I know I've mentioned this before, but I have a friend who's blind, and she just loves being able to feel the paintings. And I know some people say, oh, you shouldn't do that, it gets the oil of the hands on there, but how often? That doesn't happen very often. I mean, it. it yeah, if you did it every single day, yes, that would be a problem, but just occasionally it's, for somebody that's blind to be able to feel that, it's, it's worth it. 
Now, these are on stalks. And I just use again some of my green that I mixed for the foliage to make my stalks. I'm going to balance on my mall stick. This hooks over the top of the easel. And I can just balance my hand on this to make my stalks. And this is how I paint the, the poker plant. So please again visit my blog. You'll see the entire step-by-step -step painting. It's in several posts, but if at the very top of the page you'll see a little title on the right and the left. If you click the one on the right, you can go forward through the blog. If you click the one on the left, you can go back to see something that you'd like. So I really appreciate you watching my YouTube videos. Please always feel free to ask questions and subscribe both to my blog and to my YouTube video. You have a wonderful, wonderful day and happy painting.